All right, let's talk flash today because I remember when I first started, I'd have like a little bead of sweat coming down my brow. I was just all over the place. I would raise the power, I would raise my ISO, I would lower my ISO, but raise the power on the flash. I just didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to figure things out as fast as I could. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this video. Number one is, uh, I could have titled it anything, a hundred things, but one of the titles was the two minute portrait. Basically, your clients are late. You only have two to five minutes with them. You better know what your lights do, which is the second title I thought of is, what can your flashes actually do? And it sounds so obvious if you just take a step back and figure out what your lights can do, you're gonna be in a much better place. Lightwise, maybe not life-wise. Now, I'm sure some of you out there are probably thinking, oh yeah, just put the camera on auto and put the flash on TTL, which is auto flash and just go, you know, use the two minutes wisely. <laughs> you could totally try that, but this video is more about if you want full control and you know what your flash is 100% going to do. Using TTL and some semi-automated modes and especially changing conditions or strange conditions, could give you a problem later, especially each time you take a photograph with TTL or a semi-auto mode on your camera, your exposure changes. And then when you're gonna edit your photos later, each one may be a little darker, a little brighter. You want consistency, especially if you're editing multiple photographs. So you TTL lovers, I get you out there, but I'm more of a manual person. All right, super basics. This is a flash <laughs> and it outputs light. And there are certain things that can affect how much light is output from this flash. The first one is the power that you set. So you can turn the flash all the way up for the most light or turn it all the way down for the least amount of light. The second one is the distance. The closer you get to the subject, a little bit more light on them, gonna be a little bit more exposure. The more you pull the light back at the same power, there'll be less light hitting your subject. The third one is if you put stuff in front of your uh, flash. Like if you put a gel on there, it's gonna probably cut a little bit of power. And also the one I use and you should be using is modifying this flash, putting it in an umbrella, in a mini soft box, uh, or putting it in something that softens the light somehow, that will cut a lot of power. So that's something that you need to figure out as well. Now, as far as camera settings, your camera settings that affect your flash exposure are your aperture. So what you set your lens to, and your ISO or ISO. Those two are the ones that affect how much exposure from the flash you're gonna get. Don't worry about shutter speed for now. You're gonna set your, unless you have a global shutter camera, <laughs> don't set your shutter speed to your sync speed, which is like 1 200th. Mine usually lives around 1 60th for everything. So uh, set it to that. Now, totally optional is a light meter. I like playing with a light meter in my tests, but when I'm shooting an event, I never use a light meter. I basically go like I spitball <laughs> the flash powers. But when I'm trying to figure things out in my little brain, I have a little light meter. So check the link below. This is a good tiny Sekonic dude. You don't gotta get fancy. This guy does a great job. And what it what the light meter does is you can actually put this up to, uh, I use a dummy, but you can put it up to anything and figure out how much, um, what the settings are on your camera when you get a burst of flash, okay? so. I use a light meter. It's probably the best way to get all your data into a notebook so that you can kind of figure out what the flash is doing. Especially if you do multiple flashes, you know, it's great to get a couple of multiple readings just to check your exposure. So I say that a little light meter is kind of necessary for you to understand. You don't really need it, but it's necessary. <laughs> the second thing is I usually determine my distance, my average distance. Now this of course changes a little bit and it's you're not gonna bring out a little tape measure every time you do a portrait with someone, but I have practice where I see the person and I kind of plop my light around the same distance each time. And remember, we're trying to just get close here because we only have a few minutes for this two minute portrait, only a few minutes <laughs> for the exact two minutes. Anyway, uh, determine the distance that you'll always kind of want to set your flash up, okay? And mine is about three feet or so, which to me is my arm's length is six feet. And if I make the letter V, you know, I can kind of figure out that's about three feet or a meter. It's about a meter. All right, now you have your flash, you have your distance. We need to figure out our camera settings that will be considered standards. 
if you change your camera settings every time you're gonna do a portrait, then your flash powers will be different. Obviously, if you open up your aperture more, you're gonna let in more light, will change your exposure. So when you're writing notes down, you kind of want to have the notes for one setting. And then in your brain, with practice, you can, you know, sort of adjust if things change. For example, all my, all my um, readings from the flash were based on having the, the lens set to 2.8. Now, I don't always shoot at 2.8, but I want that to be my standard. I am doing all my tests at 2.8, right? 1 60th shutter, that's my below sync speed speed. And then I'm just gonna do ISO 100. You could do ISO 200 or 400 if you usually shoot at those, but I'm gonna do ISO 100. Mostly because I know that shooting this flash bare bulb like this uh, at ISO 400 would so overexpose my subject. This guy's a little too powerful. So if I had to shoot at ISO 400 with this in someone's face, I couldn't do it. I'd have to move the flash back or sort of cover the flash a little bit. Then once I get that one meter reading from the flash, I just start putting the flash in different modifiers, the ones I use to see how much those modifiers cut the power. So some are just shoot through umbrellas, some are double diffused, and I write all my notes down, okay? And then I collect data for the little speed lights, I collect data for you know the larger lights like this FJ200, the AD200, uh, either with the Fresnel head or I take this Fresnel head off and put the bare bulb on just to get a sense of what, that's what this is all about. Try to figure out what are the lights doing over and over again at, at one meter, at three feet, by the way. Now, once you have all your data, then it's a matter of learning your reciprocals, which is basically knowing that flashes, cameras, and lenses all go down by stops. A stop is either doubling the light, if you raise one stop, you're doubling the light, or if you lower one stop, you're having, <laughs> you're having the light, okay? So for example, the things that will need you to raise your flash power. If I take, like I said, if I go from one meter to two meters, I have to, that's one stop, by the way, I have to double the light. I have to raise my power on the flash one whole stop. If you go from those two meters to four meters, you have to go another whole stop on your flash. You have to raise the power again. Now I've talked about stops, okay, on this channel many times. I'll write them here, but your flash has, and I'll link up some flash videos below if you need more help, but your flash goes from full power to half to quarter to uh, eighth to 16th. It keeps lowering, right? By the way, some flashes have uh, powers like 10, 9, 8, 7. It's the same thing. 10 to 9 is one whole stop. 9 to 8 is another stop. So if I arrive in a, at a venue and I have this 2.8 ISO 100 flash power of this guy in the modifier, I always use is 16th power, right? So now I have those three numbers in my head, 2.8, and by the way, if I only have two minutes and one minute, I'll shoot at 2.8 ISO 100 <laughs> and 16th power. That means at three feet, I'm gonna get an exposure that's correct because I did my testing. That is the basics. So if you're ready with those powers, you could use those exact powers. However, to be more powerful, <laughs> see what I did there? You kind of want to be able to sort of, you know, skew a little bit. For example, if you go into a room and the room is not ISO 100, it's a little dark, it's a church or a temple or a venue that's a little low. So if you go from 100, right? 100 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 to 800. You just did three stops there, right? 
Now just know already that your flash at three feet is gonna be way overblown if you just raise that ISO. So that's called reciprocals. If you change one, you gotta change the other. And one mistake I made as a beginner was I was hopping through all three, flash power, aperture, and uh, the ISO. All three, trying to juggle the three to get a good exposure. Keep it simple. Either shoot everything at 2.8 and mess with the other two, or pick, pick an ISO that you're living at. As soon as you get to a venue, you're like, okay, I'm at 400. That means I'm gonna stay at 2.8 and my flash power has got to change, okay? Start playing with those three to begin with, okay? So let's give you a, a scenario. Your notes are this, right? I'll put them on the screen, 100, uh, 2.8, 1 16th power. But let's say you have to go from 100 to 400. Simple, 100 to 200, that's one stop. 200 to 400, that's two stops. All you gotta do is lower your flash from 16th power to 32nd power to 164th uh, power. And now you'll have the right, the correct exposure, okay? Let's say you wanna change that aperture now. Let's keep that the way it is and we wanna change that aperture from 2.8 to F2. F2 is one more stop. So lower that light one more stop, okay? You can also remember double its distance one more stop if you had to. But the problem with moving your light is it changes the look. If you move it back too much, it's gonna get a little harsher. You may want that, but I personally like a little softer of a look. So that's why my light is closer. By the way, we should talk about that. If all of a sudden you have one person and you're shooting at 1.4, you're shooting a beautiful portrait, but now you have four people, you gotta do the math in your head. I'm going from you know, one meter I gotta move the light back because I need more room. I just, that's one stop, bam. And I was at 1.4, but I have to go F2, 2.8, F4. You know, you have to go three stops because you want enough depth for this group. So now you just realize, you know, you move your light back, that's lowered the power and you just close, I was just about to give you the finger. <laughs> you just closed your power. You just uh, made your aperture, you know, you you closed your aperture more, which made the photo darker. So now you're gonna have to crank up your ISO or your flash power. Anyway, you have to know your reciprocals and that will make you a better photographer knowing what your lights do and being ready for the two minute portrait. I hope that helped someone out there. I hope it wasn't too confusing and I'll see you guys next time.